in the book of Acts chapter 2, the early church there. You hear a lot of people say, boy, I would have loved to have been a part of that early church that, there in Acts chapter 2. Well, I don't know if you would or not. Um, you got to see miracles and stuff, but they also gave everything they had. You wouldn't like that. And they, God killed people for lying about their giving. You wouldn't like that. So uh, when it was hot like it was back then, it was hot. Where there's great miracles, there's also great judgment at the same time. Uh, the, the Spirit of God's been grieved off the land so much now, there ain't no blessing or judgment or nothing. It's just, the Lord just waiting. He's just waiting to get us. And he's going to get this old world one of these days and give it what's, he's got, what's coming to it. Take your Bible, turn to Acts chapter 2, verse 40, 44. And all these people got saved. There's thousands of them got saved there, about 3,000. And verse 44 said, all that believed were together and had all things common. That's where communism come from. Uh, a twisted, perverted view of that verse. Our politicians now are trying to make us a communist nation. But um, it won't work without being right with God. These people weren't made to give their stuff. They did it willingly because they loved each other and loved the Lord. Big difference. Big difference. You can't take people that ain't right with God and make them love each other and treat each other right. And it'll never happen. You can't pass enough laws to make everybody love everybody. Never happen. Uh, we're in a mess. So verse 45 said, They sold their possessions and goods and parted them to all men as every man had need. They took what they had, they sold it, and they helped people that needed it. That's a good thing to do. And they continuing daily, not just Sunday morning, Sunday night. You sure you don't want to go there? Daily, with one accord, in the temple, breaking bread, house to house, did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. Now, that's a great church right there. And I want to use that as a little picture tonight. And uh, it would be our goal as a church to want to be like the early church there in the book of Acts. And I'll preach tonight on the subject, an ideal church. An ideal church. People many times have different ideas about what a church should be and ought to be, anywhere ranging from a social club to a dating house to a sports arena to a circus to a coffee shop to a, a nightclub. People have all kinds of different ideas about what church is. But the church has been called out for a specific purpose to honor God from a world of sin to the ministry of the gospel. The church, that's what the word church means, uh, called out. Ecclesia, the ecclesia, it means called out. God has called out of people. Here we are sitting here in this little building here tonight. This crowd of people here this evening were called out from that world out there. We're a different bunch than they are. There's a separation between us. We don't belong to them. They don't belong to us. We are called out. And, this, and the purpose of the church, you've heard me say it many, many times before. Don't ever forget this. Um, a church is this. A church has a threefold purpose. We are to uh, evangelize the sinner. We are to edify the saints. Got it? And we are to, what's the other one? Somebody help me? Exalt the Savior. That's exactly right. Actually, it should be the other way around. We are to exalt the Savior. We are to evangelize the sinner. And we are to edify the saints. That little outline right there. Exalt the Savior. Uh, edify the, the saints. And, and evangelize sinners. Everything the church does ought to have a means to one of those three things in. In other words, everything we support Everything we do, everything we a part of, every activity we have, I don't care if it's a youth activity or senior citizen, everything we the church is involved in ought to have the main end of evangelizing sinners, exalting the Savior, and edifying saints. 
And it's easy to get off track there if you're not careful because a lot of people just make it all fun and games and, and a lot of people just make it all food and all fellowship. But everything we do, and those things are good, all them things are good, but they should have a means to it, have an end to it. If you have a youth meeting, have preaching, have some, have some Bible study, have the Word of God. In. If the seniors take a trip, I'll give them all a handful of tracts. They give them out. Well, like we did at the couple's trip over in Gatlinburg and preached. A church should do those three things. Exalt the Savior, evangelize the sinner, and edify the saints. Now, if we're going to have an ideal uh, church this evening, re really, really quick here tonight, I just want to give you three quick things. Not going to freeze outside, uh, uh, and, and we'll go. Number one, number one, the ideal church is a loving church, right? The ideal church is a loving church. Oh, preacher, what are you talking about? Well, we ought to have a love for the Bible. You ought to have a love for the Bible. An ideal church has a love for the Bible. Now, I'm going to tell you something here this evening. You've heard me say it over and 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 over. And you'll hear me say it again <laughs> as long as I can, as long as I can breathe and got breath to preach. This book right here and the preaching of this book is center place in Shining Light Baptist Church. The main thing that takes place on this property is the preaching of the Word of God. Everything else is, is, is secondary. I know churches that are literally built on singing. I'm not against singing. When you say that, people say, I'm not against. I know churches for years, they had them fourth Saturday night singings. Nothing wrong with that. I mean, they'd have groups in, they'd sing and sing and sing and sing and sing. And I got to notice and I'd run into somebody over there and they'd say, oh, Brother Danny, you should have been there the other night. We had the best service ever. And I said, really? What happened? Somebody gets sitting there and said, no, we didn't even have no preaching. Uh, we just sung the whole time, had a good time. Now, there's nothing wrong with that. Sometimes, once in a while, but wouldn't that get old if we did that three times a week? Just come and sing and, and raise their hands, shout and hug necks. Listen, you got to love that book. You got to love that book. I have people come all the time and say, listen, uh, uh, I, I have people walk in that door back there sometimes and say, preacher, preacher, feed me a good meal. I have pre people write letters and they say, I fed off the word of God. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. One of the things I noticed when I first got saved, I had an immediate hunger for that Bible. Immediate. Nobody had to tell me. I suppose I couldn't have. Like a baby wants milk, automatically a newborn Christian wants to know what God said in that book. And brother, you get you a hunger for this book right here. Get off the devil's candy. Turn the stupid TV shows off. Uh, get off your phone long enough to get you an appetite for steak and potatoes from a King James Bible. Amen. I'm telling you, brother, we need a love for the Bible. We need a love for the Bible. We need a love for the Bible. Come down just here, y'all. And then we need a love for each other. We need a love for each other. Our ideal church, people loves each other. And I believe that, don't you? Right, that's what he told that church there in, the, in Philadelphia, there in Revelation chapter 3, uh, the church brotherly love. That's what Philadelphia means. And uh, 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 a church supposed to love each other. I have been to churches. I've been preaching revivals since I was 19 years old. And uh, I got an education. By the time I was 23 and started pastoring just after I'd just turned 23, I had already had an education in churches. I'd been all over them mountains up yonder in Bakersville and Burnsville and Spruce Pine and up North Tennessee and down in upstate South Carolina and the little country churches all over it when I was 20 and 21. And I'd sit there and I'd watch people and I would listen. And I would sit people uh, and I would listen. And then people would take me out to eat. And people would have me over to every evening. Back then they used to have the evangelists over every Every evening somebody would cook, cook for them, something like that. And I remember, I remember sitting there and people would say, uh, they'd say, well, I don't know about old so-and-so. And all the family would join in on talking bad about sister so-and-so. And the kids sitting right there listening. And I remember I was 20, 21 years old and I thought, this ain't right. This ain't right. That's your brother in Christ. That's your sister in Christ. If you're so sorry and low down, you got to talk about somebody in the church. You ought to have at least enough of a brain not to do it in front of your kids because your kids are going to pick that up, right? I, I pick that up. I've heard kids say something. We don't like her. Why? Because mama said that she's this and she's that. Look, we ought to have a love for the brethren. Come me down just a hair, please. Uh, uh, Y'all can tell, can you tell? 
when it's hitting you back there. Uh, listen, uh, you know, we ought to have a love for the brethren. You say, well, Brother Danny, there's just some people in our church that I just, ah, nah, 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 nah. watch it there now, watch it there now. Now, if you're not careful, you will develop this attitude and especially when you got a little friend, click of friends that you hang around all the time that we all get together and don't like her. And I, I'm not speaking, I don't know, nobody in here that's doing this, but I wouldn't doubt it too much. Or we all get together and don't like him. And especially teenagers, uh, we don't like her. We don't like that one. We don't like, I tell you, if you got hard feelings towards somebody in church, you better pray about it and ask God to get it out of you because it ain't right. It's not right. Like one old fellow said, to live above with the saints we love, ain't it gonna be glory? But to live below with the saints we know, that's another story. Amen. That's the truth. Ain't it? That's the truth, brother. We need a love for the brethren. I've never seen a perfect church. You've never seen a perfect church. I'm telling you, gossip will kill a church. We're, we're, every liquor store in Burke County is not going to hurt our church. Amen. I mean, they go up a pool hall out here at the end of the parking lot and it ain't going to hurt our church. I probably half members will be out there. Uh, but uh, it's not going to hurt our church. If they opened up a beer joint out there at the end of uh, Tom Neal Avenue, it's not going to hurt our church. You know what hurts the church? People inside. Inside. Cut here. Cut there. Sow a little seed of discord here. Sow a little seed of discord there. Say something negative about that person so that the next time their name comes up, say, did you know I heard somebody thought that she did this and she did that. And then it just spreads like a cancer, like a cancer. Just learn to keep your mouth shut and love each other. Now, look, if hard times really come, we'd learn to love each other real quick, y'all. So let's, let's ask the Lord to help us. An uh, ideal church is a loving church. An ideal church loves the brethren. Brethren. The ideal church loves the loves the uh, the Bible, and an ideal church loves prayer meeting and the things of God. An ideal church is a loving church. Number two, the ideal church is a loyal church. That's right. Ideal church is a loyal church. The Bible said them people went there daily. They were loyal in attendance. Amen. The Bible does say, Hebrews 10, 25, forsake not the assembling of yourselves together. I don't see how some people uh, can lay down and sleep at night with a sorry church uh, attendance record that they have. I'm, I'm not talking about when you can. I'm not talking about when you're sick, stuff like that. I'm talking about when you're well and able and just delivers. Like, you know what? I just don't want to go this morning. I'm just going to sit and watch TV and all that. that, that is, you're never going to have much of a church if people have that attitude. I'm telling you, brother, we ought, to, we ought to pray it don't snow on Sunday. We ought to pray. Listen, that stupid bowl coming on. When is it? Is it next Sunday night? Might as well go ahead and hit it while we've got a change, right? Is it next Sunday or Sunday after that, the stupid bowl? Amen. I wouldn't give you a dime for every bit of it. I wouldn't give you a dime for every football field in the whole world. I don't say it's wrong to play football if you want to play all right. But I'm going to tell you something. They've never been a ball game in the history of the world as important as God's people meeting together to worship him and teach our kids the word of God. There ain't no such thing as a ball game more important than that. Lord have mercy, I've had, well, I had them up there in Marion one time and had, had the sound men was up there and rigged it up and watching the Super Bowl on TV because I fussed at them, they better be there. And uh, uh, <laughs> it's true, that's true, watch a football game. Lord, right, I've, I've had, they have churches, have, I bet there's a lot of churches that sure are thankful for the coronavirus because they don't have to go to church next Sunday night. And uh, churches have Super Bowl parties. Listen, brother, they something inside, brother Danny, let y'all think I'm crazy if you want to. They something inside me ain't gonna give them the honors of us naming a service of worshiping God after a football game. We're going to have no Super Bowl service. We'll have the Glory Bowl where we can come and shout and praise God. We can come and enjoy the Lord, but we ain't going to give honor to a wicked event that has more child sex trafficking than any other event in the, in the whole world, world, the rest of the year. Ain't going to happen. You say, Brother Danny, I'll get mad at you. Well, you're, you're, there's some people standing in front of you. You'll have to get in line and stay six feet apart too so you won't have to hit me all at once. The ideal church, social distance while you're fussing at your pastor. Listen, we are loyal in attendance. I was preaching revival down in, in Florida a year, many, many years ago and I was about, uh, oh, I don't know, I was 20, 25, 26 years old and I was preaching down there. Big, good, good-sized church. 
uh, about maybe a little over half, half, two thirds, maybe as big as this church. Big crowd. I went in there on Monday night. I got, I hammered down. Lord have mercy. I didn't have no tact. I said you ought to be here every night. You're having revival. I mean, you only have revival a couple times a year. You ought to be in your church every single service. You ought, I mean, I got on it hot and heavy. Well, the next night. Um, well, that night, actually, that night at service, there's a lady come up to me, a middle-aged lady, and uh, she come up and she said, Preacher, she said, I just want you to know. She said, I heard what you said about being faithful. And she said, Preacher, I have driven a school bus for our county for 24 years. She said, I've been faithful and drove a school bus 24 years. She said, tomorrow night, which would have been Tuesday, the second night of the revival, she said, they are having a supper uh, to honor me. They're going to talk about me. They're going to give me an award. They're going to honor me. And she said, I told the principal that I would not be there at that thing tomorrow night to honor me. I said, you're kidding me. It made an impression on me. It really did. I thought, Lord, have mercy. I thought everybody in Florida is full of the devil. I said, well, we need that in North Carolina. And, uh, and, and she said, I told my friend. I said, well, that's, that's impressive, ma'am. I'm impressed. And uh, she said, I told him, said, I can't be here. She said, God's the one that took care of me all them 24 years. And she said, the Lord's winning. And he comes first, and we're having revival at my church, and I'm going to be there. That's what she said. And she was there. A, girl, a young girl came up right after that. She said, Brother Danny, she said, I heard what you said. She said, that touched my heart. She said, my, I play in the band, my high school band. She said, we have band practice tomorrow night, football game Friday night. She said, I told my coach. She said, I won't be there. She said, we're having a revival. We're going to do this a couple times a year. So I'm going to revival at my church. I'm, I'm excused without, and I said, wow. And you know what? We come back the next night and 10 people, I'm talking 10 people got saved and on Friday night we stood 17 people, I'll never forget it, 17 people I said everybody got saved this week, come up here and there's one, two, three, four, they lined up all the way across the church I come home and I thought Lord have mercy you know what, you know what them people did they got down to business, they got serious with God, you know you get serious with God, he'll get serious with you you, get, you mean business with him, he'll mean business with you you get down to business with God brother he'll start doing business with you and we had the awfulest time ever was. You know why? There's loyal in attendance. The Lord don't want you to put him if nothing else is going on. I'll go if something don't come up. The Lord says, love him first above all. Loyal in giving. Amen? Well, you hear me talk about that. Loyal in giving. That's right, brother. Uh, don't don't complain. Don't 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 be so tight. Don't be so stingy. Every time I talk about giving, does it bother you? And you think, well, you know, well, well you know, uh, I don't know about all that. I don't know about all. It's because you've never got your heart right in your giving. You honor God. I'm not trying to be mean to you. I love y'all. I want everybody in here to be rich and become a millionaire. I really do. I hope the Lord blesses you abundantly, financially. But if you'll learn the Bible principle of giving, that you'll honor God. You say, now, Brother Danny, they didn't. The Bible don't say a Christian in the, in, the apostles, in the epistles has to give 10%. You're absolutely right. It does not. But it does say before, before Moses was ever born, before there ever was a law, Abraham, under grace, paid tithes. They paid tithe 10% all the way before. It had nothing to do with the law. They did it before the law, during the law, after the law, Jesus condoned it when he was here and a Christian in the age of grace, they didn't give 10%, they gave 100. So you better be careful about that. Well, the Bible don't say, you better be careful, you Lord, lie will make you give 100 for it's over with. Uh, but if he does, he'll take care of you and I'm telling you this evening, folks, don't be a tight wad. Don't be a tight wad. Don't be an old skin flint tight wad uh, money grab. And the, only, and the only people that don't like that is the people that don't do it. Right? You've got it all figured out, ain't you? You're a genius. You've figured out stuff nobody else knows. Brother Danny don't know the scripture. He, you got it figured out so you can keep your money. I know you're kind. I know you're kind. You get your heart right, brother. You'd be, you'd be more than happy to give God. Listen, God gives you $10. He lets you keep nine. You brat. Good night. And he can stretch that nine, too. Amen. Amen. He made the children of Israel's shoes not wear out 40 years in the wilderness. 
That's right, brother. He can keep your teeth from rotting. If you'll brush them and tithe, don't go sleep with Reese cups in them. Oh, man, hey, man, loyal in giving, loyal in attitude, loyal in attitude. My goodness. You know, I'm, I, think, I think you ought to have a good time at church. I don't see anything in the world wrong with enjoying church. We're getting ready for heaven. We're going to enjoy heaven. Now, I don't think you ought to just cut up and act a fool all the time either because sometimes you got to get down to business and weep and cover the altar with our tears. But there's once in a while, buddy, we get to come in here and just shout it out and hug necks and have a big time and laugh and cut up. As a matter of fact, some of the funniest things I've ever seen in my life happened at church by accident. And, I mean, it's just, it crack you up. You know, and especially a church like ours, we have a diverse group here, you know, you might call it. And that's the way it should be. If your church, all you people watching online, if your church is only a certain kind or a certain income bracket or a certain, you have to live in a community, gated community and drive a nice car, that ain't a church, that's some kind of social club. A real church has a millionaire woman sitting on a seat with a diamond ring that big and a bus kid sitting beside her putting a booger on it. That's what a real church is. That's what a real church is. That's right. I'm talking about a real nice, I'm talking about a real nice dressed man with a suit on and a little bus kid come in and step on his shoe and put mud on it. That's what a real church is. For all kinds, all colors, all, all types. All, I mean, brother, you throw your net out there, you just get whatever comes in. When you, you ain't just fishing for a certain kind of fish. I like, I like stuff I have in church, Lord. I like, and by the way, all you people that are watching online, I'm glad you are, but you know, your kids are missing. Your kids are missing Sunday school. They're missing their junior church, the lessons they learn. It's funny. All those kids get, it's funny. They, one little kid, they, they learn stuff at church. They said, uh, one time these two boys had been in Sunday school and learning about the Lord, and he's in church, uh, sitting at home like this, and or they, the preacher had come over to visit, and he's sitting there talking to the mama. And the two little boys come in. They didn't see the preacher. They said, Mama, we caught that rat. We caught him. And he said, I stomped him like that with my foot. And Johnny hit him with a baseball bat. And then we got him down and beat him like that. And he looked over and seen the preacher. He said, and the Lord called him home. <laughs> Them little boys had learned, you know, you're not supposed to be mean to stuff. You know, the Lord called that rat home. Rat hell. Uh, uh, listen, uh, listen, you, you learn something. I like this story I heard one day. said uh, this little kid come in, and little, they'd send him to Sunday school. And he comes back, back home, and he said, Mama said, well, did you learn anything in Sunday school? He said, yeah. She said, well, what? I didn't like it. And they said, well, what's wrong? And he said, well, the preacher, he told me that he was praying that I'd, have, I'd get to be in a good Christian home. And, heck, I want to stay with you guys. <laughs> <laughs> That's church, everybody. That's real church. That's real church. <laughs> Amen. Hey, hey, man. Carrie, the part one time, and, and Marion, wasn't one of your kids at class? Carrie said that they're having Christmas. And, you know, at, after Christmas, you come back and said, uh, the, the, after Christmas, I come back. She said, now, ne- now, next Sunday or tomorrow school or something, we're going to have show and tell. We're going to have show and tell tomorrow. You know how kids wait, wait what they got for Christmas and show and everything. Kid went by and um, went home. This honest truth, I'm not making this up. This happened. And she said, the mama said, well, son, what would you do? She said, mama, guess what? Tomorrow we're going to show our tail. She said, what? She said, yeah. She said, what are you going to She said, tomorrow we're going to show our tail. She said, where did you hear that? She said, the teacher said it. Said everybody show their tail tomorrow. Didn't that happen? Honestly, that's not, somebody didn't make that up. That's funny, man. That's funny. I, I'm telling you, some of them kids, I like, I like what Marty used to say. Uh, 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 oh, victory in Jesus. He punched me to victory <laughs> beneath the cleansing flood. <laughs> Amen. Have you ever been punched to victory? Yeah, I have. I've got out of line before and didn't listen. Lord, punch me to victory, buddy. He'll knock your brains out if you don't straighten up. I'm telling you, an ideal church ought to be loyal in attitude, loyal in giving, loyal in attendance. Third, lastly, and I'll say this, an ideal church is a laboring church. Not only is it a loyal church, not only is it a loving church, it's a laboring church. What a work. I cannot work my soul to save, for that my Lord hath done. But I can work like any slave for the love of God's own son. 
I cannot work my soul to save, for that my Lord hath done. But I can work like any slave for the love of God's Son. My, 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 we ought to work. And you will never get what you should get out of church unless you're busy working. Don't you ever feel like, well, I don't have no purpose here. I just come and see it. God has a job for every person in this room and a whole lot more. I mentioned some of them the other Sunday and, and I thank the Lord for the response that I've heard, the CD ministry, the the, visiting, uh, the the bus ministry, all the stuff that's going on here at our church and the and the, um, the answering the letters and the all kinds of stuff like that. Thank God for the good response that, that we heard after that. We ought to, we ought to uh, the, uh, sending flowers to people that are sick, cooking meals, uh, going to uh, talk on people in the hospital I mean just getting people to church Being busy for God Being busy for God Being busy for God Being busy for God Staying busy for the Lord You know I like that story said old Jack Hiles For years he started running buses And when he first went to take the pastorate Of First Baptist Church of Hammond All it was was a bunch of real nice Well to do rich people And buddy he went there and started preaching soul winning And knocking on doors And they, they got they flipped their lid and had a big split and most of them left and everything you've heard him tell about I'll take the bus kids and all that and he said one of his deacons come to him one time he said pastor we are upset about these buses buses, buses, buses bringing in all these kids they don't learn nothing they don't listen what good's all this doing he said now friend he said this is what God called us to do he said well D.L. Moody D.L. Moody's in Chicago you know that's where Hammond is right beside Chicago and the great D.L. Moody pastored up there forever the big, big Moody church he said D.L. Moody didn't have a bunch of buses running all over town like this and Jack Howell said there were no buses when D.L. Moody was here in 18 uh, he said but D.L. Moody had wagons drawn by horses started Sunday schools and all over Chicago picked up little boys and girls in wagons with horses pulling them and brought them in and had Sunday school. And I, the deacon said, well, these buses are leaking oil all over our parking lot. He said, well, what do you reckon leaked on Dale Moody's parking lot? <laughs> <laughs> and that deacon, he was so mad. He was so mad. I can't believe. Listen, there is something wrong with a person who resents people bringing poor people and people that are not as fortunate as they are to church. There's something wrong with you. And I mean, we don't have that around here. I mean, if people know better than that, then you know better than start on me on that. I mean, I know, I know preachers that had to stop bus ministries because the big shots in the church didn't like it bringing those riffraff, you know, and people that don't smell good and all that. I'm telling you something this evening, people. They probably don't stink half as bad as your soul does to Jesus. I'm, I, listen, I'm, amen, brother, amen. Listen, you better not get this highfalutin, uh, a snotty attitude of looking down on people and saying, oh, those kind of people. Those kind of people, your foot, brother, Jesus died for them kind of people. Amen. Hey, a laboring church. Don't you ever feel like you're better than anybody else? You might wind up more shape than they are one of these days. I'm telling you, I love the bus ministry. I guess anybody knows better than say anything to me about it because I'm, I'm, oh, you have to be. You have to be. I, listen, we bring them in here all sizes, shapes, you name it, brother. Oh, you, one, you know what I heard a man say one time? He said, well, these, these bus kids will come in and corrupt our church kids. Oh, good night. Tell you what, I've seen it the other way around. Amen. I don't go there right now. I've seen it the other way around. All kids need the Lord. Labor in church. There's thousands dying every day. I remember one time my sister called me. My sister Sandy that, that died with cancer. And uh, she, she had really got on fire for the Lord. And she played the piano and sang at her church, well, up her little church up in the mountain above Marion, up 80 toward Mount Mitchell in Sunnyvale. And Sandy was, she played piano, guitar, everything, wrote songs. She wrote songs. 
I write songs, but they're, they're silly. I don't ever write a serious song. There's enough of them. And so my songs are sort of joke songs that's got little truth in them to stab you. But she wrote real real songs. And uh, uh, she, told, she said, Danny, she said, you need to go visit so-and-so, a guy that her husband Jerry worked with, electrician. And I said, where? And so she said, live way up there. And she said, I believe, I believe God's dealing with, with this guy. So I went up to the trailer one night. And I, he knew who I was. I think I'd met him. They, they all worked for an electrician, old J.B. Brooks in Marion. He's, I don't even know if they still have that anymore, but it used to be an electrical company in Marion. And uh, I, sit, I stood there, and I, this old boy, he's about in his mid-30s, and his, his girlfriend is living there in a, in a trailer, and he's had his Bible book. It's right here. He's just, that boy, boy's all to pieces. I said, "What's wrong, Calvin?" He said, "He said I'm going." He said, I, "I'm read, He said, "I've been reading Revelation." You ever seen a lost person get a hold of Revelation and read it over and over? Man, they, they think they're losing their mind. Man, demons coming out and the world blows up and skies falling, and sores all over everybody. Ah, that's what's gonna happen to me. He couldn't make heads or tail of it. He's scared to death. And I said, "Man, you know what you need to do?" He said, "What?" I said, "You need to get saved." And he said, I can't. I said, why? He looked at her and her, Barbara. He said, we're, we're not married. We're living together. And I said, well, won't you get married? And it was like a light come on. He went, well, I guess we could. <laughs> You'd be surprised. You'd honestly be surprised how the devil's got people. Their minds are so blinded that me and you just think, well, duh, fix it. And, and they don't even, and they said, well, I guess we could. I said, look, and, and don't wait to get married. Let's do this. Right now. You could die and go to hell tonight. And they got down there on the floor, right there on the floor, and prayed and got saved. Right there, got saved, both of them. They got saved, got baptized, got married, joined the church <laughs> in about a week. You talk about going through a change, brother. I mean, they're wicked sinners shacking up. They went to church, member, baptized, saved, and had a King James Bible, and, and got married all in about a week and a half. You know what that is? That's a laboring church. And there's a lot of Calvin and Barbaras out there if you're not too scared to go see them. I want to challenge everybody here, especially our men. I want to challenge you. Labor. Labor for God. Let your kids see you laboring. Let them, I, I, I mean, we can talk all night about story after story after story where people labor. And, and, and stuff, just help each other. A church, love each other. You know, I remember, we're spread out a lot here at our church, so we're, it's a little bit different here. Cause we've got people that live in that direction, over yonder, and call it, there are several different counties. I got that. But I remember when church people, if somebody in the church needed a roof, a bunch of men get together and help them go put a roof on their house or, or fix a car. Or they'd, the ladies, when a lady was sick, they'd bring food over to her house. People were close, and they loved each other. And I understand the day we're living in, people don't even have the evangelist over to eat no more. I, we're living in such a fast-paced, all this modern stuff has really took our free time, ain't it? So have a, be a laboring church. You know what some of y'all need to do tonight? Come on, Luca. Come on up here and let's play something. We'll not have no singing, but some of y'all need tonight, you need to just say, you know what, Lord? I'm going to quit holding back. I'm going to quit just sticking my toes in and watch everybody else swim. I never could stand to do that. I never could stand to sit and watch a bunch of people swim. I'm going to jump in it. I ain't going to sit and watch you swim. I'm going to jump in. Don't be satisfied just sitting and watching everybody do something. Jump in. Get your feet wet. Get your feet wet. Let's stand by our heads for prayer tonight. Heavenly Father, we sure do thank you that we have the opportunity of having church. We know that we may not always have this. Lord, I'm aware every Saturday and every Sunday when I see the buses coming in, that we may not be able to do it. 
forever and much longer. Please, God, please put it in the hearts of men, women, boys and girls. Let us be a loving church. Let us be a loyal church. Let us be a laboring church. We'll thank you for it. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Now our heads are still bowed and people are still praying. Maybe you need to just slide right out of your seat. Say, Brother Danny, I need to get, I need to really get in there. Here it is, almost February 2021. Jesus is coming back. I want to be ready. Come on, come on. Join these. Join these here tonight. Join these here tonight and come on. Amen. Amen. Brother Danny, I want to get me a handful of tracks on the way out. I'm going to get me one of them signs. Get it, get the job done. Get the job done. Amen. Amen. God help us tonight. God help us tonight. Lord help us to stand by and let the world go to hell. Lord help us to be like that old lady I preached about this morning. With that broom. Let them know whose side we're on. We'll thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.